Welcome to LDSBrokerviews.com. My name is Ryan Daly and we are back at it. It's been a little while and I apologize for that, but we're gonna get back at it. Got some new equipment, it's gonna be easy. A little while and I apologize for that, but we're gonna get back at it. Got some new equipment, it's gonna be easier. We're gonna roll through this pretty quick. In fact, today we're gonna to do one of the most anticipated books that has come out in a long time and that is called The Lost 116 Pages by Don Bradley. Okay. The Lost 116 Pages, Reconstructing the Book of Mormon's Missing Stories. This is printed by Greg Coford Books. I enjoy Greg Coford Books and a lot of the things he publishes, uh, or they publish. Uh, and this one was thrilling. Uh, this is probably the best seller that they've had in quite a while. Um, what Don does is Don does, he's a phenomenal researcher, and he goes through the first half of the book, details the history of the 116-page manuscript, or what we kind of nicknamed the Book of Lehi. Now, the Book of Lehi is that manuscript, or the lost 116 pages. It's reportedly the manuscript that was lost by Martin Harris uh, after they finished completing the translation for a, a period of time. Martin petitioned Joseph to let him take it, show it to a few people. End of story, it went missing, never found again. Joseph was told not to retranslate those, but that he would be able to translate the small plates of Nephi that would cover the same period of time. So Don Bradley does a phenomenal job of going through the history and legend and lore and all of the reports of the 116 pages of the book of Lehi. And he comes up with some phenomenal conclusions, some things that are a bit of a paradigm shift to understanding the book of Lehi. Then the second thing that he does in the second half of the book is he goes through and does his best to reconstruct some of the narratives that we believe would have been in the Book of Lehi. Because of course, the abridgment of the Book of Mormon in Mormon's eyes was to be a complete run. So he actually, like Mormon, naturally integrates uh, and navigates through his narrative and weaves in stories and recalls things back. Uh, we are missing the foundation of what Mormon intentionally meant to build for us to better understand this. So there's some really interesting stories that kind of come out of there that we can anticipate were in there. This book, before I get into more details, is a four-star book, easily. I'm gonna throw that out, I'm gonna say four stars. Um, this is probably the best book on the Book of Lehi that you're gonna get. So remember, one star means don't read it, it's worthless. Two star means read it if you've got nothing else to read. Three, it's okay, it's good. Four means it's the best on the topic, and five means it's gonna make you a better person. This is a four. If you're looking for information on the book of Lehi, curious about it, love the rumors about it, this is the book you need to get, okay? The first half of the book, as I said, goes through the history, legend, and lore, and he makes some really consistent arguments. I'm just gonna tease it a little bit. One, the book of Lehi was not 116 pages. It sounds like it was more than likely 300 pages. We got labeled 116 pages because it took 116 pages to replace the context. It's more likely that it kind of composed half of the book. If you think about it, that means the Book of Mormon would have been much bigger than it currently is. Um, almost uh, another 150 pages. E either way, he's got some really phenomenal arguments in relation to that. He also does a really good job breaking down the most likely candidates for who actually took the manuscript. Uh, as well as has some really interesting dialogue that comes from a relative of Martin Harris who was there during the translation process and he makes uh, different comments about it. The second part of the book, he introduces a number of interesting ideas regarding um, things that were focused on in the book of Lehi. My favorite one being probably the first uh, regarding how the book, how the uh, sacred objects of the Nephites created an ark relationship with them, kind of like the Ark of the Covenant. Um, and that the, even the sealing of the uh, stone where Moroni would hide the plates would be very similar to the Ark of the Covenant that'll contain the law. And instead of the ark having it on the gold outside and the stone tablets inside. It had the stone plate, or the gold plates inside and the stone on the outside. Really interesting compare and contrast. Some of the other narratives, uh, extrapolations he has, I think I have different conclusions for what I would expect in the Book of Lehi. I thought some of them were stretches and probably contained richer, more depth than Mormon probably would have gone into in some of the old heritage. I don't think 
the principles are wrong. I just don't know that they would have been included as overtly in the text as Mormon didn't wasn't always that overt about some of the fine details culturally in there. But with that being said, like there has not been a work on the Book of Lehi that has been comparable. And Don Bradley knocks it out of the park. So totally recommend it. Totally embrace it. Um, get it, read it, engage with it. It's thought provoking. It's uh, believable and it gives a lot of context. So with that being said, lost 116 pages, go read it. Don Bradley by Greg Kofer Books, four star review. Um, totally would recommend it in anyone's library. With that, thanks for watching LDSBookReviews.com. I'm Ryan Daly. Feel free to subscribe to this page. We're going to get back at it and keep throwing some uh, reviews at you pretty soon. And um, have a good day.